fishing freaks and all that enjoy the outdoors. I'm LFG. We're back talking about some fall fishing today. The leaves are falling, the, the animals are scooting around in the forest, and if you're not in a deer blind, you need to be out there fishing. I sometimes like to refer to fall as the forgotten fishing times, because there's not nearly as many people out there fishing, but you should be, because when that water tip starts dropping, they start feeding. So we're gonna be talking about fall tactics today and I'm gonna take you out on the water. And today's video is brought to you by Carl's Bait and Tackle. Hey there, LFG. Yeah, that guy. Now, even though Carl looks like a little gnome and I'm not sure I've ever really seen him catch a fish ever, he is surrounded by some pretty smart people that love to fish. Carl's Bait and Tackle is the newest online destination. Go get your tackle needs, wants, and it's created by the Mystery Tackle Box team, so you know it's good. Now Carl told me to tell you about the huge Black Friday sale that's going on. I know it's a little ways away, but I'm gonna go ahead and let you in on a little inside knowledge. Anyone can shop on Carl's, but when you join the Carl's Club, you're getting 30% off the entire site. Big time savings if you're buying a lot of tackle, like me. And if you spend over $25, which you're going to, I mean, that's like a couple spinner baits, then you get free shipping. But if you're watching this video right now, which you probably are, you can go ahead and start Carl's Club, join as a Carl's Club member for free, a free trial, and then you're going to get the early Black Friday deals, and you're gonna get an extra 10% off on those deals. Go ahead and get your 30 days of free Carl's Club membership by clicking the link in the top of the description here. You don't have to be a member to get Black Friday discounts. Just go there on Black Friday, and you'll see the discounts, but if you wanna go ahead and get early access, go there. Thank you, Carl, for hooking up the Fishing Freaks with a little bit of an early discount. Now let's talk about some fall transition fishing. I'm about to hook the boat up. We're gonna head out on the water. I wanna explain to you the scenarios that happen in the fall. If you like fishing shallow, you're in luck. If you like fishing deep, vertically, you're in luck. Both of those things are fun. I gotta admit, I love to chase deep schooling fish. And then the shallow fishing, you got bass chasing bluegill, Oh gosh, the frog fishing could be phenomenal. I was out with Lunkers TV and some of the Guggen team here where we're fishing shallow reeds and pad stems. But what we saw and what you're going to see if you fish in the fall is random fish coming up, boiling at the surface, shad balls, you might see birds out in the middle. Those are indicators that bass are out there schooled up on balls of bait and they're attacking them underneath. And you can go out there and you can chase those fish. It does require you to read some electronics. And if you look at here, you can see the bait balls, they're pretty tight. And then the bass are underneath them or behind them and just kind of going around them and corralling them. And every once in a while, they'll blast one. Jigging spoons, flutter spoons, blade baits, those are all really effective at vertical jigging or casting. If they're coming up to the surface, you can hit them with top waters like walking baits and lipless crankbaits. But then if you want to get down and dirty with them in the shallows, flipping gets good. Whenever that water gets under 70 degrees, fish push up into that shallow cover, frogging, flipping, moving baits like spinner baits and chatter baits and shallow cover. You're gonna see some shad left up in there. Bluegill are gonna be up in there. They don't leave that shallow cover. It's both things. It's whatever you wanna do. Beautiful, fat fish to be caught in the fall. I hope you're gonna take advantage of it. Now, I'm about to head out to a flooded lake that I haven't checked out in a while and see what the fish are doing. So let's get out there. Dear goodness. I don't recall ever seeing the lake this flooded. Looks like we're gonna have to mount up, find ourselves another body of water, y'all. It's adventure time. A new day and a new lake. Another gate closed. What is a fisherman to do here? Obviously high enough to where they think it's dangerous. They're closing these gates. Yeah, that water's not supposed to be there. I'm gonna go to another lake because I already, I called up there, I know the ramp's open and I know there's grass in there and they have a, a spillway on the lake that keeps it level if it gets too hot. Dear goodness. 
I am ready. I am ready personally to catch a fish. Just ran across the school of fish. Kind of on this ledge. I want to see what they are. I don't know if they're white bass or I don't know what, what all they have in this lake. Oh, I just got one. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. They do have white bass in here. I am the white bass king. You're just lucky, sir, that not a, a eating day. I already have some meat in the freezer. The bass that are offshore, three o'clock, magic number. Three o'clock, if you find some offshore fish, they're not biting, wait till three, go back there. Let's go find some shallow veg and see if we can chop this salad up. This lake has also got some rocks, so I am gonna try a little square bill unit as well. And this is one of the baits that came from Carl's. They have just upped their selections. Gonna have to do a little flipping as well. But I just can't resist. We gotta, we gotta get in there with the frog at this moment. Okay, we are just loaded. Loaded with shallow cover. Got me a crack and craw, ready to go for some flipping. Some 20 pound fluoro. Fish, you just gotta speak to me. You just gotta tell me how you want it. I'm gonna give it to you that way. I can go deep, I can go shallow. I can play ball however you want to. Flooding has just got this grass looking prime. It's starting to die off. It's not as thick where you can get a lure in there. Kind of open close to the bottom, I would assume. Oh God, you're swimming with it. Tuck my daggum pinchers. Ooh. Right on the edge. That was a good bite too. Switch up colors a little bit. He hit it on the swim up, grabbed it by the pinchers, and I thought he had it. He was swimming. That's one of them good solid bites right there on the main link point that you just know it's gonna be a dandy. Oh, he's got it. Got him. Oh, he's tiny. Tiny, tiny. Yeah, right where you're supposed to be, but you are not the right size, my friend. Sorry to hit you so hard with that hook set. If you were anything like the last one, I needed to hit you hard. Okay, first bass bite. Came on the crack and crawl. And another one, small one. Right there in that same area, just a little bit off. It looks like there was a small school. I just turned off the GoPro I, and then looked at, down at the graph. I saw there was a little, uh, little piece of structure down there. It looked like it had a few fish on it. One good one. That was definitely not it. This could be the move here to get down and dirty one. This is not what I was picturing for a overcast day. Doesn't mean you can't dangle them on overcast days, but I, I typically like to chunk and wind. All three bites so far though have been in like five to seven feet of water where the old lake line is. So nothing up in, a, uh, in the flooded new stuff yet. Just had another bite on the other side of this dock. Felt small, felt small like that last one. Got all these great factors that look like bass. I think I even smell one up under here. Oh, he just got it. He just bit it. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Let it go. Tattooed it and let it go. Sometimes you just gotta take a second, take it all in, enjoy the fall colors, wearing a flannel, some sip, some sip, some hot coffee, a good sneeze. <laughs> got some free range freedom roast in here. Oh, that's perfect. We got some Eddie Ray's deer sausage. Deer sticks, jalapeno cheddar with an apple. OSG approved. Life is pretty good. I feel like my chi is good now and I'm gonna catch a big fish. And this is why I love fall fishing. I'm the only boat out here. I just get to enjoy the sights and sounds of nature, catch some bass, and I can scream as loud as I want to. I'll be like, hey look everybody, they're over here. And ain't nobody gonna come over there, cause it's just me. So far catching two little ones and a white bass probably isn't convincing you to get out there. So I need to get back on that trolling motor and I need to catch a Mondo. Oh, 
Oh, there's a decent one. Oh, he just had it good. Yeah, baby. Just caught him an easy hook set on him. Look at that fat, beautiful fish right there. Ooh, with that crack and crawl down deep. A little flipping hook doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay, you beautiful creature. Go back to doing what you do. I love you. Woo! That was a tasty one. On that crack and crawl. I pitched it in there under the dock and it just started swimming and the fish hung onto it really, really good. So close to the to the main part of the lake right here. These docks are a little shallower though and they have a really hard bottom. I can see the rocks that come out, I can feel it. Dark colored plastic throwing Bama bug right there. So dark water, dark colors, overcast, that's what it is. I'm gonna get back to fishing docks, y'all. That's the obvious thing to do. And if anything else comes up, I will uh, give her a dangle. These conditions are making me want to put on a jig too. A little PB&J action here. This little catch co flipping jig here ought to do something. The perfect depth for jigs, like a 3 8 ounce jig. Ooh, just slide that little thing in there with that shorter rod. That's what I love about it. So when I'm like dedicating myself to dock fishing, I usually go for a little shorter rod. So you can roll cast it up under there easily. You just have more accuracy, more control. Usually you're pretty close to the fish when you're setting the hook dock fishing. So you don't need to just throw the hammer down. Oh, that's nectar, nectar, nectar. Come on, baby. Oh, broke it, broke my line. Oh, oh, I can still see my line. Oh, he's taking off with it. No, no, no. Oh, where's my line? Had a bad spot in it. Uh, tell you guys the story on that one. We were doing this golf course fishing. You know, Rob comes over and takes his knife, cuts my line, retie my line, and cast it out. Anyways, I'm trying to catch my line right now. The fish just took that jig, and it was it was gone. I gotta thank Lunkers TV for that one. You guys do me a favor and go over to Rob's channel and tell him how much I enjoyed losing that fish. Oh God, that fish came off, took my worm. Son of a biscuit right up there in that grass. What happens on those situations, you lose those fish they, they bite it real good and you're like, man, how can I miss that fish? They grab the end of the plastic and on your crawfish, you know, they're grabbing the pinchers and then they take it off the hook like this when they grab it and they grab it real hard. So when you set the hook, you're basically just ripping that right into there, right out of there. There he is. Got it. That's a good one. That's a good fish. Oh, where's he going? Oh, how big are you, sir? Oh, yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, yeah. Get up in here, baby. Mmm. That just makes the day golden right there. Look at that crack and crawl. Thumped it so good. Right in the same exact spot that I've been catching them all day. Ooh, I'd hate to see the last one I broke off. It's pushing five pounds. We're gonna let you go now. Oh, I love bass so much. Love the way they smell, love the way they look. Perfect environment right here. Go back to your dock. Eat some more bluegill. Get fat for the winter. And I'll see you next year, hopefully on a bed. Ooh, got to love it, baby. How amazing is that, y'all? A screaming hawk flying overhead. 
catching a nice four and a half, five pounder on a bait that you spent a long time developing with friends. It's beautiful, man. I love the outdoors. I love it so much. I love bass fishing so much. I needed that fish. I have really caught some big fish in the month of November on spinner baits, chatter baits, big worms, and then jigs and cross uh, around, around docks. Around docks, brush piles, when I start uh, hunkering down into that structure. I'm gonna try to catch another one, but that sure was fun, y'all. What a moment. Love it. Instagram worthy, you betcha. Gotta love the great outdoors, man. Should be one in this stuff. This grass that's really close to deep water. It's prime. It's a prime looking spot. This right here, there's a log. Ooh. Oh, one's got it. Got it. Yeah. Called it. Gotta love it when you can call it. There might actually be another one right there. Sit, uh, there's a log that comes out and then that grass is coming out and it's just close to deep water. When you dangle hard for a long time and you, you just get a bite gradually, you start really studying, why did I get that bite? You know, why, why was that fish there? And then you replicate and replicate and it just, it becomes a pattern and you just kind of know like, all right, I don't even need to fish over here in this water. I, I just need to focus on this. This cover, this depth, just put it right there. Another tasty lay down in perfect depth. Let's put it between the cracks right there and see what happens. Another branch over here. Wow, I'm, I'm honestly shocked I did not get. Oh, there he is. Oh, about to say. <laughs> I was about to say, I would be shocked if there wasn't a bass on there. He was just out a little bit deeper on the end. <laughs> you know what? That's not a big one. But I think I'm gonna end the day there. I've just, I've really enjoyed getting able to dial in, flipping this shallow cover with the cracked craw, and just go to work. You know, this has been nice. This has been really nice. Our journey ends here today, fishing freaks. Very similar pattern as to what I saw on the other lake that I, that I showed you first. I didn't quite see the schooling activity out there as I did at the other lake, but same thing with shallow vegetation around five feet. And this lake had docks. It also had some laydowns and the fish were on that shallow cover. And man, targeting shallow cover with jigs and flipping baits, mm, it is fun. It is a lot of fun. It takes some focus to make those right casts into the piece of cover, but when you do and you get the bite, and you feel that thump and you set the hook, oh, man, there's nothing quite like it. Hit the like button for solid thumps and solid fish. Hit the like button for fall fishing explained. Hit the like button for daggum hawks flying over screaming. I think it's a sign of goodness. And while you're clicking, just go ahead and hit subscribe, y'all. Hit the ding-dongs for all the notifications so you don't miss a single video here. I enjoy doing these for you guys. And let's not forget about curls. Pick up the Kraken Craws, some of the other Guggen baits at Carl's. Cool weather's got me excited, y'all. The next adventure is right around the corner. Stay tuned. I love you. God bless, and I'll see you on the next one.